Hey everyone, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and in this video, I'm gonna be taking a deep dive look at the 2019 Sonos Amp. Not to be confused with the older version, which is the Sonos Connect Amp, although I will be comparing the two just a little bit. It is capable of powering in-ceiling speakers, in-wall speakers, it can be configured to run a home theater. It is really one of the most universal amplifiers that you can purchase on the market, but I'll just say up front, this thing costs $649, and most of the videos on YouTube are coming from dealers who are looking to make a sale from you who want you to buy this. And a lot of the times, they don't wanna talk about the downsides of a system like this, but in this scenario, I am the purchaser. I'm the customer, same as you. You're looking to see if this is an actual worthwhile product to pick up, or if you should go with another solution. And in this video, my goal is to answer that in an unbiased fashion. I'll be talking about the downsides as well as the features. I'll be going through an unboxing of the amp. I'll be giving you a real world test to show you how this actually performs in the real world. And also I'll be ending it off with answering the question of whether or not it is a worthwhile amplifier to pick up. So with that said, let's get right into an unboxing. All right, so as far as the outside of the box goes, it is pretty minimalistic. I mean, it mentions that it's got Apple AirPlay, but it is an overall simplistic box until you get inside, although inside it's pretty simplistic as well. Opening it on up inside, you'll see. You've got your amplifier, which is in this nice microfiber sleeve to prevent the amplifier from getting any scratches or fingerprints or really anything while in transport. But pulling it out of here, let's take a look at it really quick. You will see you've got the front, which has three capacitive buttons. It's got two programmable buttons, but by default, these are volume buttons. You've got a play pause, um, and that can also function as a skip if you're like double tapping and whatnot. You've got an indicator light here on the front. This is a passively cooled system, so it does not have any active fans in it, and it is built in a way that it is 1U tall. So if you're somebody who has a lot of equipment in a network rack, then this fits within 1U, which is amazing and great, and it's actually nine inches by width and length, meaning that you can put two of these side by side as well in a U and not run out of space, which is something that Sonos listened to their customers about and made specifically due to the customer's requests. On the back here, you've got your power in, you've got a sync button or reset button, you've got a line input, sub output, two ethernet jacks, so you can put one ethernet in and it will actually pass that through like a switch, an HDMI arc in, and then over on the far right, you've got your right channel output as well as your left channel output. These are banana plugs, but in the back of this box, it comes with a banana plug to regular type adapter. So these guys right here, they plug right into these banana plugs on the back, like so, in a really elegant way. It's got metal, these are not plastic, solid metal lugs, and over on this side, it's where you've got your power cable. And finally, in the bottom of the box, you have some welcome, let's get started things. I guess I'll open it up just in case you're curious. Inside here, You've got some safety information as well as a quick start guide. So that is all you get inside the box. It's really nothing more than that. So sitting everything aside now, let's take a look at setting this up, the process of actually doing that, and then let's talk a little bit on the way about the features that this has to offer that I have not mentioned yet. So when it comes to setup, it is incredibly easy, I'll be honest. All you've gotta do is go ahead, plug your amplifier into power, make sure it's seated all the way, flip it around so you can see the status light. And as long as that is flashing white, what you're gonna have to do is download the Sonos app. It is the gold one, not the one that is gray with Sonos S1. Otherwise, if you set it up that way, you're not gonna have a lot of the features that this has to offer. So make sure you are using the newer gold Sonos app. If you've never created a Sonos account before, you will have to go and create an account when you're setting up the system. But essentially what you do in here is down in the bottom right, you click the little gear icon, you click select your product, and it will begin searching for nearby products in your network. It should automatically discover it, which it did in this case, and then you just click add. But if it didn't, for whatever reason, all you have to do is unplug your power cable, press and hold that sync button here on the back and hold it while you go and plug in the power. Keep holding it until this front light turns orange. Then you can let go of the button and it will go and basically 
factory reset the amplifier and it should go and show up in your app then at that point. If it doesn't, then contact Sonos. But anyways, at this point, you can click add and you will have to go and sign in. This is where you will either create an account or sign in if you already have one. In my case, I already have a Sonos account, so I just gotta log in. Then once you've signed in, it will go and verify that your Sonos app is up to date. And then you get the option of adding this amplifier to an existing system, which an existing system you have to create if you already own other Sonos products. But if you don't have any other Sonos products, then you should go and create a new system. And at this point, you will have to go and press the button on the back of the amp to make sure that you are adding the correct amp. This is mostly due to if you're setting up more than one amp at once, then it will go ahead and connect your amp to your app. You'll have to go and type in your password for your Wi-Fi. Although if you are hardwiring this in with Ethernet, you won't have to do this step. As long as it connects to your network successfully, then you will be brought to a screen where you're able to select where you are putting your amplifier. You can go and create your own name or you can just choose from one of their preset um, options. So for right now, I'll just choose this. You can change this later so it really doesn't matter right now. And then it will go and have you update your Sonos amp. So it is running the latest version of the firmware that is available to it. And there you go. That should end relatively quickly. And like I said, you are all set. So now you have to choose between using this in a stereo set you can use it as front speakers for a TV, or you can use it as surround speakers for a TV, which is really cool. In my case, I'm gonna just use it as stereo speakers, and you can go ahead and connect your speakers into the amp at this point. You could do it before as well, but it's just reminding you to do that. Also, it'll go and just tell you that you're set up as a stereo set. So there you go. In general, I will say that the Sonos app is pretty filled with features. I mean, it takes a little bit of time to discover everything that it can do, and it does have a little bit of a learning curve, but once you've got it all figured out, it is one of the probably best apps, I will say, for a smart device and it can do, like I said, pretty much everything that you would want it to do. So now that I've covered the device setup, I'm just gonna real briefly talk about the differences between this Sonos Amp and the former Sonos Connect Amp. So the biggest differences come to obviously the look. Um, when you look in the rear, everything's almost the same. It's got the same inputs, outputs, However, this amp does have the HDMI ARC input, that is new. Also, the fact that these are banana plugs that are removed, so you can plug in your own banana plugs right there, is new. However, you could do that with the older Connect amp if you removed these plugs, but it's not as elegant, and these plugs are on here permanently, so you can't remove them nicely like this. So if you want to go and pull out your amp really quickly and disconnect your speakers, you don't have to sit there and unscrew everything or go and disconnect them by pressing in the lugs. It's a really simple process and really easy. But other than that, functionally, these are quite different as well. The Sonos amp can put out 125 watts per channel into eight ohm speakers. However, it can support up to four ohm speakers. And if you plug in two four ohm speakers, it can put out 250 watts per channel, which is insane. However, when it comes to the older Connect amp, it can only put out 55 watts per channel for a total of 110 watts total. And this cannot support four ohm speakers. I mean, if you did connect some four ohm speakers into this, it wouldn't go and explode or anything, but it might go into lockdown protection mode uh, to save itself from burning out. But both of these do have class D amplifiers. So if you're curious about that, type of spec, then you are set there. Um, as you can see, like I said, these are very different in their looks. Obviously, they are different in color, but they're also different in size. Like I said, this is a 1U specifically designed unit, so then it can fit into a rack. So you can easily put them in. That's mostly for the installers who like to go and put everything into one place, which is actually something that I did end up doing here, but you don't have to do that. It just I, in my opinion, I really like this design over the older design. This just looks so much better if you're gonna sit it in your living room or something like that compared to the Connect Amp. When it comes to actual features that each of these have, aside from the fact that this is more powerful for speakers, is that the Amp supports AirPlay 2, which means that you can go and group rooms together 
just via Apple's AirPlay. So you don't have to go and use the Sonos app in order to go and group places together. However, with the Connect Amp, this does not have any form of AirPlay. It doesn't have original AirPlay. It doesn't have AirPlay 2. So if you are planning on using AirPlay in your system, then you will have to go and purchase an AirPlay compatible device that can go and put some audio in through the line in, which is very unfortunate because it's very convenient to be able to just go and AirPlay directly to this device without the need to purchase other devices. That is probably one of the biggest functional feature differences between these that I didn't totally know at first when I purchased these. Although I will say if you are mixing both of these in your system, first of all, make sure you are getting an S2 compatible amp, but also you can go and link these together. So if you do AirPlay via AirPlay 2 to your Sonos amp, you can go and share that audio to your older Connect amp. So you don't have to worry there. With that said, let's give you a sound test so you can actually hear how this sounds in this small space here, powering some Polk Audio Atrium 4s. Alrighty, so now that I've got each of the amplifiers connected to a speaker, obviously it's not as ideal as if I had stereo set connected to each of them. However, this is all I've got right now, but this should give you a good idea of the sound output of each of these amplifiers. All right, so I'm gonna start by turning one of these up at a time to 50%. So I'm gonna start with the older Connect amp and stick my microphone right up against the speaker. Not right up against, but enough that you can get a good idea. All right, and now time for the TV room. Let's turn that to 50%. Okay, so I'm not sure how well that translated in the video, but being here in person, I can hear a clear difference. Like it is noticeable that this speaker over here that's connected to the Connect amp, it's both less loud and it's also less detailed. When you're listening to the speaker over here, let me remind you, these are the exact same speakers. And in fact, they're brand new. However, the one that's being powered by the amp over here is both louder and it is clearer in its vocals and the crispness of the audio. I would say that this amp is definitely a winner here. Um, when you go and you begin turning up the volume really loud, you can also hear a difference. I'm only gonna do this temporarily because I don't want to blast the speakers, but here is a chance for you to hear the difference of the output of these. I actually will say now, I cannot turn this amp up all the way because it will blow these speakers. It can put out that much power but let me just show you the real world comparison here Okay, I can't go any further than that. Um, the amp over here is definitely the winner. I mean, it makes sense. It has 125 watt output to each channel. But now that you've heard the difference between the Connect amp and the amp, let's go and show you the other real world scenario where this is actually installed in a building, both in a gym and in some in ceiling speakers. So. Let's go so you can get a real experience there. All right, and here we are. I am now in the gym where one of the amplifiers were installed. I will be going and showing you a more realistic scenario where I also installed an amp powering some in-ceiling speakers, but this is the main room where I'm gonna be showing off how powerful this amp is. So just to start off, if you're curious about the setup as far as the speakers go, there are four total speakers in this room. They are set up in stereo and there are four running off of one Sonos amp. So there's not two amps per two speakers. It is just one amp for all four. So they're in all the corners. There's one over there. There's one in that far corner over there. Same as in that corner. And then this corner right up there. Specifically, the ones that are in the back corners are Speakercraft OE8 speakers, which are four ohm speakers, and each of those individually can put out up to 150 watts of continuous power 
which is great. And then the other speakers that are on this side, they are different. They are a technically stereo speaker, but they are wired in parallel. So the two tweeters and the dual voice coil are running off of one line, which brings a four ohm load to the amplifier. Essentially, the white speakers, they are run in series with the other speakers, the speaker crafts. And so each of the stereo sides come to the amplifier and they present a four ohm load to the amplifier. So theoretically, it can put out 250 watts per channel in this sound system. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm just gonna start playing a song. I'm not sure how well it will translate to the actual experience of hearing it on video. I will back up just a little bit. I'm sure you can hear a lot of echo in here. Especially with my Rode video micro, you probably can't really hear me that well at this point. But if I go ahead and begin playing some music, I'll start at around 50% and you can get a listen of how it sounds in this space. Turn it up a little bit. So there you go, that is how it sounds. I know it's not the perfect scenario. You can't really hear it in person, unfortunately, but let me tell you, I am blown away every single time I hear how much volume the amplifier can put out. It blows me away that in a room of this size, it can fill it as if they are running PA speakers inside of here. It's insane. So I gotta say the power that this thing can put out is fantastic. And with that said, let's go and move into the downstairs living space, which is where some in-ceiling speakers are installed because that's a little bit more of a practical scenario that you might encounter yourself. So in this room, there are a total of four in-ceiling speakers. I don't know the specific model names of them, but each of the speakers are four ohms and they are run in parallel to the amplifier. So the amplifier is once again putting out a four ohm load to the four speakers. They're also set up in stereo. And when you begin playing them in here, they sound really good as well. And I found the ability to go in and adjust the EQ for these speakers applies really well. I will say that adjusting the EQ doesn't work as great as what it would if you had Sonos branded speakers, unfortunately. But if you do have your own speakers, there is still a little bit of a difference. Let me play with that just a little bit so you can hear yourself. <laughs> When it comes to these in ceilings, I actually had to go ahead and set a volume limit of 80% max volume because if you turn it up any louder, honestly, I believe you will go and burn up the drivers of these speakers. So I do wanna point that out. I did have to go and set a volume limit for these speakers because the amplifier can put out that much sound. I didn't have to do that in the gym. You can turn it all the way up. I didn't put a volume limit there, but out here, you did have to do that. So there you go. If you wanted to know how much power the amplifier can actually put out, I hope this gives you a good idea. I know when I was looking around, I couldn't actually get a really good idea of how much it put out. But with that said, before I answer the question that you're all wanting an answer to of whether or not it is worth it to get the Sonos amp yourself, I just wanna show you the setup of how this is installed into a rack. Ideally, you don't wanna have the other devices sitting on top of the amps, although they've been performing just fine. Um, but this is what I was meaning, how it is specifically built to fit into a rack. If you look at this, the tolerances of the fitment inside here on top of this shelf is just perfect. Sonos really thought this one out and it fits perfectly into a regular rack. So if you wanna stick it in with your other devices like networking, like we've got up here, then you're all set. I also got the older connect amp 
sitting right on top. But the main thing that I do want to point out is with that passive cooling, if you want to go and stack your Sonos amps on top of each other, then they will go and actually radiate the heat up and away from the amplifiers. So you can go ahead and stack these all you want. They are built that way. And that is the reason why they've got these vents on the top as well as the bottom. They're built to go and stack, which is a great feature. All right, all right. I will answer the question for you now, whether or not I believe it is actually worth it to pick up a Sonos amp. I gotta say for 649 US dollars, I'm not totally sure it actually is worth it to pick up this amp. Although it has a ton of features, it is quite expensive. But I will say, if you're able to go and pick these up on the used market, which they hold their value really well, so even still they will be expensive, but not $649 expensive. So if you can happen to go out and pick them up on the used market, then I actually do think that these are a fully functioning perfect solution for pretty much any scenario you've got. If you've got multiple rooms and different zones in your house or business, this is the way to go. Or even if you wanna have some standalone speakers powered, that's where I don't really think it's especially not worth it. You can get much cheaper amps that are able to power the speakers, although they may not be this level of hi-fi, but if you are just powering general speakers, I think you should go and save yourself some money to either get the older Sonos Connect amp, which is S2 compatible, or go ahead and get some other brand of amplifier. But with that said, I don't hate Sonos. Sonos is amazing, and if you can afford it, it is worth it. But it is a little bit hard to muster up the change to purchase multiple of the amps to actually use them in the way that is most ideal. Also, this is just sort of a random aside, but I do wanna point out that the support that Sonos has is phenomenal. I actually went and bought a used Sonos amp that happened to actually still be under factory warranty. And when I got that amp, it had a rattling sound inside of it. And literally without question, Sonos support went and asked me if I wanted to replace it. And I said, yes, please. And so they went and RMA'd the amp for me. And there was no questions asked whatsoever. It was just added to my account. And then they went and sent me a new amp. I sent in my old one and it was all that. So I gotta say, Sonos support, if you need support at any time, the person I spoke to was really nice and although they gave me that new amp for free, it also, I believe, would be a good source if you are having any issues whatsoever, they should be able to help you right out. So there you have it. That is pretty much it for this video. What do you think? Is the Sonos amp worth it or not? It's all ultimately up to you and your budget constraints, but um, yeah, hopefully this video has helped you come to a conclusion on whether or not it is worth it for you. But with that said, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button down below as well as subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And also let me know down in the comments whether or not, first of all, you think it's worth it for you. And second of all, if you like this type of content and if you'd like to see more of it in the future. You can also check out some of my other videos by clicking right over there. But on that note, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video. Peace.